thank you for watching my thesis defense practice run. My thesis has three chapters and each of them is about a different problem. So I'll probably only have time to talk about two of them. The first one is motivated by this neuron firing model where you have N neurons and they are allowed to be in different levels, maybe 10 levels. And there's two different stages for this model. One of them is the burst and the other is the interburst. So between bursts what happens is that at each time a randomly chosen neuron just increases its level by one spontaneously and that keeps happening to other randomly chosen neurons until one until the neuron that gets chosen happens to be in level nine and that's when the burst stage starts so as a first approximation let's pretend that when this happens we are only interested now in the neurons that were on the last level at this moment so say that the neuron that fired was the one here on the left what what's going to happen during the burst is that each neuron has a probability p of influencing another neuron to fire as well and this is what I'm representing in this picture by edges so the ed this neuron could have an edge to all of the other neurons potentially but there is only a probability that this will happen so maybe it influences two other neurons in the picture and these neurons get into a queue of neurons that are going to fire as well so we look at each of them in turn and the same thing happens for each of them uh, it looks at all the other available neurons at level 9 and there is a probability that it will have an edge to that neuron so making it fire as well and when the queue is empty we say that the burst is over and then we can look at the number of neurons that participated in the burst which happens to be a connected component if we look at it as a graph this is the exact same thing as the other training random graph but obviously this is not the whole picture because there are other levels right so next thing we can say is well let's look at the two less levels and in this case what happens is that as well as having the probability of making another neuron fire this neuron that we're looking at also has the same probability for each of the neurons at level 8 to influence it to become a level 9 neuron so that the next neuron from the queue that we'll look at can then make it fire as well. So basically, instead of the number of available neurons at level 9 decreasing with time as neurons get into the queue, it's actually increasing in time because more neurons are coming into level 9 from level 8. And in order for this to actually be increasing, we have to consider that there are more neurons in level 8 than level 9, and throughout the whole thing we are going to be assuming that there are enough neurons for this to make sense. But anyway, this is just the motivation. Uh, what we're actually going to be looking at is this random walk. Um, it starts at 1, and it increases at each time by a random variable whose parameter is t over n, so the parameter is increasing in time, and then it decreases by 1. So what this is supposed to be analogous to is the size of the queue. So the queue starts with one, when one neuron fires, which is when the burst stage begins. And at each time unit, that is, at each neuron that we look at from the queue, maybe some other neurons get into the queue, and then that neuron that we're looking at gets out of the queue, so there's the minus one. And when the wall gets to zero, that means that the queue is empty and the burst is over. So there is nothing else that we can do from there other than wait for another neuron from level 9 to spontaneously fire which means that we begin another burst so in the walk what we're going to do is when we get to zero we say that we're crashing and when we crash we reset the walk to one which is basically just look at the next burst so one over n is uh, the probability that one neuron will influence the other and t is the number of neurons at the at the last level at that moment. So like I said, the number of neurons is increasing and here we're just assuming that it's increasing by one every time to make it simpler. And also we're looking at the number of neurons that are going to get into the queue as a Poisson random variable, which is another approximation because of course we have a limited number of neurons there, but this will also not make that much difference in the range that we're interested in. So. Here's the thing, the Poisson random variable
variable has a parameter that is increasing. So at some point it's going to become bigger than 1 so that this walk will have a positive drift. So, and it keeps increasing even after that. So it's with probability 1 the walk is going to eventually go up to infinity. So it makes sense to ask about the last crash. And this is what we're going to be interested in. We want to find a distribution for the place or the time when the last crash happens. This is going to be equivalent to, say, the number of neurons on level 9 when a burst begins that is a big burst. Well, big in terms of the walk means that it goes to infinity. And in terms of the neurons, what it means is that a positive fraction of the neurons are involved in the burst. So maybe n over 2 or something like that. And this is a histogram for a lot of uh, simulations that we ran. This is the, where the place of the last crash was. Um, there are four different graphs in this picture. The first one is for n equals 100, which is the one that is slightly different. And the others are n equals 1,000, 10,000, and 100,000. And probably the reason why that one is different is just because n is too small, because all of the calculations that we're going to make are uh, valid for n goes to infinity. So, not surprisingly, the last crash is happening around time t equals n, because that is when the, the Poisson has parameter 1 or bigger. But there is this whole critical window here of n to the 2 thirds, where for any place in this scale, n plus alpha n to the 2 thirds, or n minus alpha n to the 2 thirds, there is a probability that the last crash will happen there. So it can happen after n, it can happen even before n. And this is the critical window that we're interested in showing, uh, to show that this scale of n to the 2 thirds is actually the interesting one. And in order to show that, we're going to need to show four bounds. It's the upper and the lower bound on either side. So to show that the critical window is not bigger than this, we need the upper bounds showing that this thing here is actually going to zero as this alpha goes to infinity. And to show that the critical window is not smaller than this, we need a lower bound to say that as n goes to infinity, there is actually a positive probability, not zero, that the last crash is, say, at n plus 100 and to the two thirds. Um, so this is what's going to happen now. We're going to show each of the four bounds.